What's up, Cream Heist? Welcome to another criminology educational video. And for today, we will be discussing fire technology and arson investigation. By the way, my name is Sean Francis Andego, also known as The Professor. So before we jump into our discussion, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The Professor, and hit the notification bell for you to be updated for my next upload. So for today, we will be discussing the properties of fire. When we say properties of fire, this may include any traits that can be measured such as density, color, mass, volume, length, and temperature. And as with respect to the properties of fire, we will be discussing the physical properties and the chemical properties of fire. First on our list would be the physical properties of fire. So these are the following physical properties. So first is boiling point, second is ignition point. Third is flash point, and the last one would be the fire point. First would be the boiling point. The boiling point is the constant temperature at which the vapor pressure of liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Vapor, these are diffuse matter such as smoke or fog suspended floating in the air and impairing its transpa transparency. So, ibig sabihin si vapor, ito yung mga diffuse matter na nakakalat lang sa paligid. So, it is suspended floating in the air. Second would be ignition point. It is the temperature that must be reached by a matter in order to start a fire. So, this is usually called as the kindling point, kung saan ito yung dapat ma-achieve na temperature for a combustible ma matter to start a fire. Third would be flash point. For flash point, it is the minimum temperature that must be reached by a liquid in order to release vapors that supports combustion. So, ibig sabihin si flash point naman, ito yung minimum temperature or pinakamababang temperature na kailangan ma-reach ng isang liquid combustible or combustible liquid in order to release vapor. Yung vapor kanina, yun yung sinasabi natin na uh, diffuse matter that is suspended floating in the air. Next one would be the fire point. Fire point, these are temperature at which the liquid will release enough amount of vapors for combustion. Si flash point kasi, it will release vapor that will support combustion. Ito namang si fire point, it will release enough amounts of vapors for combustion. So what is the rationale behind the physical properties of fire? To burn a fuel or uh, the combustible material, its temperature must be raised until its ignition point is reached. So, di ba diniscuss natin that ignition point, ito yung kailangang ma-reach ng isang combustible matter in order to start a fire. Thus, before a fuel or combustible material start to burn, or before it can be ignited, it has to be exposed to a certain degree of temperature. When the temperature of a certain substance is very high, it releases highly combustible vapors known as free radicals. These are combustible vapors such as hydrogen gas, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. So, ibig sabihin, pag highly combustible vapors, these are free radicals. The fuel is, is heated until its temperature reaches its fire point. The, uh, and then right after that, the composition takes place wherein the moisture in the fuel is converted to vapor. The composition produces combustible vapors that rise to the surface of the fuel, which is the free radicals. And will, free radicals will undergo combustion. Next would be the chemical properties of fire. So just to give you a heads up, we will be discussing four chemical properties of fire, namely endothermic reaction, exothermic reaction, oxidation, and pyrolysis. First on our list would be the endothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction is the chemical change that undergoes whereby a matter absorbs or adds energy or heat. So, ano yung pinaka-keyword natin dyan? A matter which absorbs or adds energy or heat. So, ano, uh, paano natin mas matatandaan na if yung matter, it, uh, it absorbs or adds energy heat, uh, paano natin matatawag na siya ay endothermic reaction? So, before, ang ginagawa ko is that, uh, tinitignan ko to. So, pag endothermic, EN, so that's entry. So, it absorbs 
or ads or umi-entry or pu- may pumapasok na uh, energy or heat. So, yun yung nagiging keyword ko. Endothermic. EN, which is entry. So, yun naman yung pagkakaiba niya sa exothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction, it is the chemical change that takes place whereby a matter releases or gives off energy or heat. So, ano naman yung magiging keyword natin dito? It releases or gives off energy or heat. So, ang magiging uh, parang palatandaan natin dito is si EX, which means exit. Unlike kay endothermic, which is EN, entry, so it enters heat or energy, while exothermic, it exits or releases or gives off energy or heat. So, yun yung magiging palatandaan natin para mas lalo nating maintindihan or matandaan si endothermic reaction and exothermic reaction. Third would be, uh, uh, before we jump into oxidation, let us first... Uh, Uh, refer ourselves to the illustration pa- para mas lalo nating maintindihan kung paano yung concept ni exothermic and endothermic. So, yun nga. Kay exothermic, it releases energy. So, yan yun. The arrows, um, papalabas, siya, uh, papalabas siya dun sa glass. And itong endothermic, papasok naman siya. It is towards the uh, matter. So, endothermic, it absorbs exothermic it releases third on our li- third on our list rather is oxidation when we say oxidation it is a type of exothermic reaction so uh, since siya ay type ng exothermic reaction ang kanyang concept is or ang kanyang um, sistema is that it releases or gives off energy So, it is a chemical change or reaction that takes place upon the introduction of oxygen. Kaya siya tinawag na oxidation. So, yun naman yung magiging palatandaan natin. When we say a chemical change which takes place or guma- uh, nagkakaroon ng chemical change upon the introduction of oxygen. So, oxygen, oxidation, di ba? And the last one would be pyrolysis. When we say pyrolysis, it is the chemical decomposition or which is the scattering of molecules of matter in reaction to heat. So, ibig sabihin, pag siya ay uh, na-expose sa heat, there is a chemical uh, chemical decomposition takes place into the matter which it scatters its molecules. Next would be the products and effects of fire. For the products and effects of fire, we will be discussing the product and what is its uh, proportionate effect o yung kanyang um, magiging epekto. First is smoke. Smoke is a tiny solid particles produced by fire. So, what are the possible effects if you are uh, exposed to smoke? First would be panic, of course, kasi wala kang makikita. Second is low visibility. Third is accurate respiratory irritation. So, mahihirapan ka huminga. Uh, such as cough or pag, uh, pag-ubos, nis, pagbaheng. So, these are the possible effects if you are exposed to smoke. Second would be fire gases. Gases, uh, these are uh, gases that are produced by fire through pyrolysis. So, idiniscuss natin kanina that pyrolysis, um, pagka ang isang matter is um, exposed sa heat, um, it decomposes. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na chemical decomposition. So, what are the possible effects of fire gases? Nandiyan yung intoxication, tayo ay malalason. Loss of consciousness, mawawalan tayo ng malay. Comatose. Death. So, yun yung mga possible effects if we are exposed to fire gases. Next would be heat. So, these are thermal agitation of matter in which temperature rises at its kindling point. When we say kindling point, these are the ignition point. So, what are the possible effects? Uh, uh, before we uh, discuss the possible effects of heat, let us first know what is the normal heat of a person. So, ang normal heat talaga is 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. So, what are the possible effects of fire, uh, of heat rather if uh, na-exceed na natin yung normal heat or normal temperature that dapat meron tayo? Of course, perspiration, pagpapawis, dehydration, heat shock or sudden exposure to fire, heat stroke, and heat stroke rather. Next would be flames. So, these are incandescent gases as we have already discussed 
um, prior to this video discussion. So when we say incandescent gas, these are very bright, glowing with intense heat. It is a combustion product and a manifestation of fire when it is in its gas phase combustion. What are the possible effects of flame? So, nandiyan yung burns, which are uh, wound caused by heat. So, let us discuss what are the types of burn. So, meron tayong tatlong types of burn. First on our list would be first degree burn. So, first degree burn, ang magmamanifest or ang magpa makikita natin sa balat is that blistering and red discoloration of the skin. So, para mas lagot lali nating maintindihan, let us refer ourselves to the pictures or the, to the picture in the pre PowerPoint presentation. Second would be the second degree burn. So, it is exposure of dermis without deep scarring. So, ito yun. Uh, let us refer ourselves to the picture. Pag nakita natin yan, or exposed na si dermis, or yung outer skin. Therefore, um, siya ay second degree burn na. Next would be the third degree burn. So, meron ng charring of the skin and deep scarring. Next would be the types of flames. So, types of flames based on color and completeness of combustibility fuel. First would be luminous flame. These are orange red, uh, orange red deposit suit at the bottom of a vessel, being heated due to incomplete combustion and has a low temperature. So, para mas lalo nating maintindihan, it is a form when the air hole is open. So, ito yung example ng luminous flame. So, orange red yung kanyang kulay. So, usually these are low, uh, 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 at its low temperature pa lang or intensity. Next would be the non-luminous flame. So, this is blue. There is a complete combustion of fuel and has a relatively high temperature compared to the luminous flame. It is formed when the air hole is closed. Si luminous, it is formed when the air hole is open. Si non-luminous, kabaliktaran. So, this is an example of a non-luminous flame. So, this is the luminous flame. Ito yung inner, which is uh, red-orange yung color. And si non-luminous flame, ito color blue. Next is based on fuel and air mixture. First is premix flame. Is exemplified by a Bunsen type laboratory burner where hydrocarbon or any substance containing primarily carbon and hydrogen is thoroughly mixed with air before reaching the flame zone. Diffusion flame is observed when gas alone is forced through a nozzle into the atmosphere which diffuses in the surrounding atmosphere in order to form a flammable mixture. The candle flame is an example of diffusion flame governed by purely mo uh, molecular diffusion and the flame of the oxyacetylene torch. So, ito yung sample ng premix flame. And this is an example of a diffusion flame. So, premix flame is color uh, red-orange, which is the luminous flame, and the diffusion flame color blue, which is the non-luminous flame. Next is based on smoothness. First is laminar flame. When we say laminar flame, when, particle, uh, when a particle follows a smooth path through a gaseous flame, while yung turbulent flame are those having unsteady, irregular flows as physical size, Gas density or velocity is increased. All laminar gas flows tend to become turbulent. So, laminar, smooth path, turbulent flame, unsteady and irregular flow. So, this is a good example of a laminar flame. So, straight lang siya. While this is an example of a transition going into turbulent flame. Okay? Next, uh, thank you very much for watching this video and hope that you've learned a lot about the properties of fire. So, if you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the professor, and hit the notification bell for you to be updated for my next video upload. Thank you very much.